Okay, so um, my name is Laura Dorfman. I'm the chair of the Historical Commission. We'd like to call this meeting to order. The meeting's being held by Zoom. And um, we will start with the approval of the minutes from November 14th. Does anybody have any comments or questions about that? Those minutes? <clears throat> sure, just, some, just something really <clears throat> minor. Rose apparently prefers that when her name is, is provided in any kind of documents that it's Rose A. Doherty. Okay. So not to be confused with Rose E. Doherty. Is there another, oh, like Rose E. Rose E? Like, yes, Rose E. 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 Okay. So Gloria, do you want to just make that quick little change? You're muted. Yeah, I can make that, I can do that. Awesome. And then, okay, <clears throat> is anybody else like Joe or Leah, anything else you noticed in the minutes that you want to comment about? No, oh, I, I, I didn't see anything. No it comments okay. here either. <clears throat> okay, so. I'm sorry. I move to accept the minutes. Second. I'll second that. Any objections? No. Okay, so we can say the minutes of November 14th are approved with the change to add Rose's middle initial to her name. Yeah. And we need to vote on it. <clears throat> we need a vote. No? Okay. Should we vote just, just to vote to say we did? Sure. No? Okay, so can we have, um, so I'm asking for a motion to approve the November 14th minutes with the change to Rose's name, adding the A. So, um, Don? Uh, um, move. <laughs> Don't make Gloria? <laughs> yes. Joe? Yes. Leah? Yes. Motion granted. Those minutes are approved. Okay. Now let's get to the fun stuff. Right? Don? Don't we have fun stuff to talk about? <clears throat> um, I guess we do. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have this, we have a meeting coming up next Tuesday with the select board to talk about the, um, um, the historic district. We met um, last, was it last week? Prior, the prior, I think last. Yeah, the week before yep. um, with two members of the select board. And I think um, they have a better understanding of the timeline. Um, luckily, uh, Jen Doherty also joined in the meeting and she was extremely helpful in explaining um, the amount of the time blocks that are needed for certain approvals, for certain public hearings, et cetera. So I think they have a better understanding now of how long it's going to take. So they're not pushing for anything to happen uh, at the May town meeting. I'm um, sorry, Don, did you say you met with the select board or with? Um... Two, two members of the select board. So the chair and vice chair. Yes. And and as Don said, Jen Doherty was there and really gave a good overview because I don't think, like as we were before, we understood the complexity of, of the process. They actually have to initiate it. I did give them some language, um, which I took from Mass Historical Commission documentation. They were initially looking for language for our warrant article. Um, but we wanted to make sure that they really understood you know, the steps. So we did give them some language. Um, Kate did email, as we mentioned earlier, um, Dawn and, and me, or actually it was just me, um, inviting us to be on the agenda for the select board meeting next week. And I have, to, did you read her attachment? I feel like I, I should have <clears throat> done that. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I did. Um, I, I had. I don't know if it's so much an edit as it is a question. Okay. When they talk about the composition of the um, of the study committee, uh, one of their one that they list is the resident of the proposed historic district, 
And I seem to recall when we were talking about this, when uh, Mo was at, at our meeting, that um, he was reluctant to be on the committee because he would have to abstain from any votes. Okay. So I, you know, I don't know where that, if that needs to be discussed when we meet with the select board or would, would open up another slot. Would he have to abstain? Because if you're asking, if they're asking for a member of the potential district to be on the study committee, that would always be a potential conflict. Right, right. But this one, I think they, I guess the idea that I had would be that the study committee would look at different options for a local historic district. The board, the select board seems to be focused already on Moe's house. Uh, because the the information that we received was for a single parcel historic district study committee. Um, yes, I'm, I'm looking at it now. Do you want, should I share my screen, Don? Do you think and show the document? Sure. Okay. Let me do that so we can look at this. But I mean, while I'm doing, it's just such good news that we're. This is like a major step, right? Like we've been oh, talking yeah. about this yeah. for a long time. Hi, Jeff. Good to see you. You're muted. You're muted. We can't hear you. All right. Sorry, I've been here for probably five minutes. I've heard so I've heard the discussion. I just wasn't um, on video. No, that's fine. So I, you know, I, we, I just want to say, and I'm sure everyone else feels the same way. We're so, so very sorry about your loss. And um, we're thinking, everyone was thinking about you and still is. So just want to say that. Thank you all. I'm sorry I missed, uh, you know, the, the last meeting. I actually had plans on attending. We were at dinner and I, I mm -hmm. had arranged, I, I could have done it while at the dinner. And then I, the, the mind doesn't, gets distracted doesn't work well and then i like remembered an hour later oh yeah that's, that's okay and and did you meet joe and leah i just want to make sure where you are i have actually i have not oh okay can we take a little bit of a sidebar here if it's okay and joe and leah if you can just like introduce yourselves to jeff who's been on the committee is, for how long is, i don't see is leah here he is here she's not on video but she's here Okay. Um, so Jeff, how long have you been on this commission? Um, I don't know, seven, seven years, maybe. Okay. All right. Uh, good. Um, so can you, can Le Leah, maybe you can go first, just give you a quick you little. Want me to, I mean, you want to give me a, want me to do a little, what is it you're asking me to introduce sort of my, uh, well, you can, but I was going to have them introduce themselves to you so that okay. they. So you could understand who they were, but if you want to say a quick thing about yourself, that's well, you started. I'll just finish. I'll try and be yeah. brief. I just, uh, um, I mean, I've always been a, a preservationist. I live in a historic house. Uh, the, I live in the uh, the house on the corner of Great Plain Avenue and Central <clears throat> Avenue, diagonal from the church. It's a big uh, two-family gray house, blue gray, and uh, and I've been a town meeting member for. Uh, more than 26, seven years uh, and and advocated strongly for preservation uh, for on the floor for for all of those years. So it was uh, certainly a, 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 gr a great opportunity for for me to fill in a slot on, 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 on this committee. I, I also serve on the solid waste disposal advisory uh, uh, committee. And that's me. That's great. So um, who wants to go first? Joe, do you want to just give a quick um, background? Sure. Hi, hi Jeff. Uh, my name is uh, Joe Morrell. I've lived in uh, Needham since uh, 2011. Uh, I live over in Oakland Ave in an 1890s uh, uh, home right behind the school administration building, which I'm happy to see being restored in, in the very near future. Um, mm -hmm. I spent 20 years in uh, corporate America doing real estate development of, of many old historic uh, commercial buildings. And for the past six plus years, uh, I've started, I left corporate and started my own construction company and do um, no new builds. Uh, I do mostly uh, renovation stuff and I do specialize in historic home restorations. 
uh, which I just took on. I want to tell the group I just took on a 1920 uh, Victorian over in West Roxbury uh, that I'll be doing over the next several months. So I'll be happy to share several pictures of that uh, as we as we go through that uh, restoration. That'd be awesome. Great. And I got and I got two kids in Needham Public. I got a 14 year old at Pollard, and I got a 10 year old over at Sunita Williams. I have three kids. I have three kids who went through the Needham system. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, Leah, are you? Can you give yeah. a little? Please, thank you. Hi, sorry, I don't have my camera on. I'm having some camera problems tonight. Um, but I am Leah Wolkovich Cordy. I am new to Needham. We just moved here in July, but saw this as an opportunity to get involved straight away. I was very excited when the opportunity came up. Um, live over by the Needham Junction train station in a house from 1884. So I too have a beautiful old house that we are loving. Um, I am an on, architect. On what street? On Unpleasant. Okay, know it well. Um, I'm an architect by trade and work for a firm that has really made a name for ourselves doing adaptive reuse and preservation. So saw this as a really good fit for myself professionally and personally. Um, I've got one small child who's not in the public schools yet, but that was definitely a draw for us when we were looking for a place to buy and love Nina Public Schools and are ready for when she's ready for them. <laughs> That's me. So Jeff, you can see these are two like totally amazing new members that are gonna add a lot to our group. I, I, I was looking forward to meet, meeting them because I read the, uh, the, the minute. So um, I, I was uh, excited with the expertise that we you know, uh, bring to the, the committee. And uh, Joe, uh, you know, some of the people, everyone knows here, I'm um, uh, also uh, doing so a re real, re uh, real estate development um, in my neighborhood. And um, if you would mind, uh, wouldn't mind sending me an email with your information. So we, we have a, a, a professional discussion I'd like to start with, if we could. Of course, happy to do so. Okay. Great. Hey. Okay, good. I, I sorry to sidetrack. It wasn't on the agenda, but I just wanted to make sure when I saw you come on, Jeff, that you knew everybody here and that you knew, you know, I, I was thinking about Laura, th th thank you for the accommodations. I, really, I, I appreciate it getting up to speed. Thank you. Sure, of course. Um, okay, so we talked about the local historic. I wanted to add to that update, um, to that agenda item number two is that I um, met with an attorney through my, just my work experience who happens to be on the Medfield Historical Commission. And we had, a, after we did our sort of bank business, we talked a lot. We had an hour long meeting and she was wonderful and gave me a lot of information. Um, Medfield has a separate, as, as part of the um, establishment of a local historic district, some towns create a historic district commission that is separate from the historical commission. And Medfield has such a commission. And she, um, one thing she said was that they really focus when they talk about the demo delays, which they, theirs is two years. But what they talk about is the preservation piece. So even if they will try to work with the proposed developer to say, well, what if you just saved like this part of the house? You know, so at least you've got something of the, the, of the character of the house, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and, you know, she was really had so many like ideas which are escaping me at the moment, but I'll share them when I gather them. Um, I'll share more of them, but one, Thing she did was to connect me with the chair of their historic district commission whose name is Michael Taylor. I was away last week um, but I want to set up a meeting with him um, because that's a, you know if the only town that I did research on that didn't have a separate historic district commission was Dedham. They combined them but that's a step in this process 
Um, and I think if we have a call, it would be great. Dawn, you should definitely be on that call because I know this, this is something you've been really working on. Um, he's happy to talk to us. He might even be able to talk to all of us. I don't know, but um, he was really excited about talking to us about what they've done in Medfield. So, you know, I'm going to try to set that up with him and see if he can commit to, you know, sort of maybe a quick like Zoom meeting or something. Um, and if anybody wants to be on that with me, just, you know, I'll let you know when it is. Um, but I think it'll be great to hear from him. So I just wanted to mention that. You know, Bel both Belmont and Brookline have, you know, a similar, um, you know, the historic commission's part of the planning, you know, you know, it's the planning and preservation uh, board, you know, it's not a, a commission, you know. Uh, these towns, this Medfield has this just it's a separate commission and they review all of the requests for historic districts. Um, and usually there's a member of the historical commission on that committee, but you know, it's, it's so it's something we may, you know, we may decide to do or not, but I think we should definitely talk to him. So when I get the date, I'll, I'll reach out to you guys and, and let you know, but I think it'd be interesting to talk to him. So for now, where we stand is, and it's, it's a good, we've taken huge steps is Don and I, as you know, met with the, with, it was also Kate, Gloria, Kate was on that call. Okay. And Marcus and Marianne and Jen Doherty went through the whole thing. It was great. Now our next step is to go to the select board meeting with this document, which I haven't shared because I've been talking. So let me share it and then we can move on. Oh, host disabled. Kristen, can you let me share or no? Yep, hold on one second. Let me find it, hold on a second. I'll set floor. I'll set, okay, where's, here it is. Okay, give me one sec. Let me know if you guys can see that when it comes up. Got it. Yep. Yes. Okay, good. So um, this is what is going to be presented from my understanding and Don, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like this is what's gonna be presented to the select board. Um, and let me just move it down a little bit. Um, So what they're proposing, as Don said, is the first step in this historical, uh, in, in creating a, a historical district is a local historic district is to um, is to have a study committee that's appointed by the select board. That's the first step. And if you guys are rusty on the whole process, Don and I have a whole thing from Mass Historical Commission on the steps. We can email, I can email that to you, but we've seen it a few times. So this is the first step. So we need the select board. They're starting because I think of Mo, right? I think it's, they're gonna do a single parcel, um, which would be Mo's house. And this is what they would be presenting that night. Um, here's, these are the people that we need on the study committee and they have to appoint them. So this is work for them. They need to go, right, Don? They need to, I mean, we can help them, but they need to make these appointments to the study committee. That's step one. So planning board, AIA member, board of realtors, Needham History Center, historic commission, resident of the historic district, and one member at large. Um, you know, Leah, I think you could definitely serve as the AIA person. Um, Gloria, obviously, I don't, I don't, I think you could fill <clears throat> roles on this committee, but they have to appoint the these these members, and they have to reach out to 
the American Institute of Architects, the AIA, and the Board of Realtors. And if, if, I, if I remember correctly, John, if no one responds, we can go try to sort of find somebody. Is that your memory? Yes, that's correct. There's a time limit. Um, I can't recall exactly what it is now, but um, if they don't respond after so many days, then the uh, select board probably would take recommendations from the commission. Yes. Yeah. So we need to be thinking about people that we might know just in case. Um, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's the real, I, it, you know, I'm assuming Leah, you know, you'd be willing to be part of this, um, but the realtor, someone nominated by the board of realtors is, is probably, I think, going to be the hardest thing. So if anybody knows anybody that's, you know, inclined to support, you know, a local historic district. Do they, you know, Yep. Does the state, you know, the the American Institute, the do, you know, do they kind of want that, you know, I mean, do they jump in for recommendations, or, or would they really want the 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 town to come up with their own recommended ar architect? You know, that's a good question. I kind of felt like it was bit from I, I I from what Jen said that sometimes they just don't respond these organiz these umbrella organizations, and that it's in the town's hands. Did you feel like that, Don? Yeah, I think you're right. But Leah is a, uh, an, an AIA architect, our Leah on our commission. So if she's willing, you know. Yep, I am. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so this, so just moving down on this document. So here, if no nominations are received, the board will consider an architect, realtor, and a member of the history center. So we could give them, as Don said, a recommendation. And so, again, this is for presentation to the select board. So they they talk about the the purpose, and they list the our charge. I'm sorry, the charge of a historic district committee, which we talked about, which is the group that would handle trying to locate other areas for historic districts other than just like Moe's one house, you know, we, we really want to find a neighborhood or write on some. Well, yeah, I, I guess that um, <clears throat> I'm not sure I'm clear on that, whether they're going to be studying uh, the potential for other historic districts or if the focus is just going to be on Moe's house. Well, wouldn't it be one at a time? Yes, it would, it would be. It would as far be. as that, uh, yeah, as far as applying for the district status, that the study committee could make a recommendation one way or the other, I would think. Well, yeah. so if this is the charge of the uh, of the, the the study committee, could that study, that's the, it's, that study committee is, membership isn't just for one, um, district no. right so, no. so 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 here is the charge that would and i and everything i read here um applies to whatever district you you do so it's That's written right. in that way whether you could do a, a district or a one house district or Correct. it all yeah. applies so they if can you, yes. the result of this study group is to make a recommendation for a district correct other districts that would follow would go through a similar process. Through this same study committee, although some towns create separate study committees for separate districts, we're not, I, we don't want to do that because we don't right. want to, it doesn't seem like we really need to do that. That's like, we don't have those kind of resources, you know? Right, right. Um, are you open to typos? Well, this is from Kate Fitzpatrick, so I don't think- Yeah, there is a typo. It's bullet three, Jeff, is that what you're- Yeah, the, including uh, review of, right? And, yes, and also yeah. the um, prepare initial report. I believe that should be an, yeah. an and, not an and. You're right. Correct. Okay, so I'll respond, I, e I'll, I will email Kate back and I, I, you know, I'll sort of just point those out, but um, but that's 
but this is the first step. And the fact that we've come this far, like is, is really huge, honestly. I think this will get pushed to October, Don. Is that what they thought? On that the seemed, yeah, that seemed to be what they were saying. But imagine this gets done, right? And then the rest is sort of kind of up to us to, to move it forward, us and the study committee, right? We've got the approval from the town. We got to make this happen. We don't, we've been talking about this for so long. And now we're really here. Yeah. Uh, I think the fact that you have this document prepared by Kate means it's it's going forward. Yeah, they were they were they wanted to do this. They were very yes. I very think I, I I think this is really good news. This is I think this is really good progress. Yeah, and you know, honestly, John had the idea of we had we had gotten a meeting with with Kate and Marianne and Marcus, but Don had the idea of asking Jen Darty to join. And that was a huge, not a game changer, but a huge um, boon to what we're trying to do because you've heard her speak. I mean, she's great. And she's here to advocate for these kinds of things. So um, I think that was really helpful for, for Kate and Marcus and Marianne. Don't you, Don, to hear Jen? Oh, definitely. I think she gave a credibility I won't say we lack credibility, but <laughs> I think she gave a lot more credibility um, to the process um, and what we were trying to do. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing this. Um, so we now we know where we stand with that, which is great. And then the next topic is the foster house. So if you're a town meeting member, you probably got the email saying that a purchase and sale agreement was signed. Did you all get that email? No. no, no, I don't. Okay, I can. I'm not a town meeting up. member. Okay, I can. Uh, Don, did you get it? No, I'm a town meeting member. Did uh, Jeff? I don't recall it, but it, okay. you know, but 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 it could have gotten by me. Okay, yeah, of course. So, um, I will find the email if I can. Um, and is it okay to share that, Kristen? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, let me see if I can find it. It came from Kate, right? Um, I believe it came from OT the OTM email address. So OTM at needmma.gov. So if I type in OTM, it might pop up. It should. Let's see. Um, no. Um, Castle Hill, maybe if I put that in. So this is the property which has a house on it, which, um, you know, we were we 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 sort of want to try to save if we can. I can't find it, um, Kristen. Any other? Did you receive it from the listserv email for town meeting members? I don't remember the email link. Um, Let me just see. Sorry, you guys. Um, I mean, I can go back in my own. If you type in office of the town manager, okay. the email was update to Castle Farm. Um, let's see, there was two that went out. Update to Castle Farm, it should be. Okay, let's put that. While I'm looking for it, what, 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 oh, here it is. It was from Cindy. Okay, so you got it from the listserv. Yeah. So basically, um, just to refresh your memory, um, there was an item on the October town meeting for open space. Um, and then some information came forward that it was for, it was involved with a property owned by, um, the foster family, which contains a whole bunch of acreage and the town was in negotiations with Northland Residential to develop it. Um, the foster family, is, there's a lot of history to it and we can get into that in a minute. Um, there wasn't a lot of information at town meeting, then it came forward, um, it came out on this email 
on December 6th, which I can share, basically that the town has, we found, they found out that the purchase and sale agreement for this property um, and Northland residential was executed, which means that, um, you know, the, the, the development of the property, you know, is, can can move forward, but there's all kinds of zoning things and planning board things and conservation things and other things that are involved with it. So, um, you know, our concern here is that there is this beautiful home, um, which the foster family lived in, and um, it it it's not listed on the register, unfortunately. Um, but we want to advocate for um, us to be able to maybe save that home, you know, in some way, like turn it into some sort of, I don't know, condominium development or whatever, a way to just preserve the outside of this home. So now that the agreement has been signed, we don't have a, really a ton of time because what we do, I mean, it's going to take a long time to go through the whole process, but we're concerned about that house. So Don um, crafted a letter that, or an email that we want to send to the select board, right, Don? I'm not sure who it would go to. Yeah, right. We're not sure, but Kate, maybe mm -hmm. in the select board, and I can. Um, do you want to share that, Don, or do you want me to? We crafted an email. I did part of it. He fixed it and made it look much better. I think Gloria looked at it too. Um, and we want to just have you guys look at it and see what you think. Yeah, um, you received it along with the agenda and the minutes. I, I can I pull it up. a chance to look at it, but if you could. You want me to share it? Yes. Um, and Jeff, I know you're, is Jeff, Jeff's not here anymore. Oh, you're there. I know probably you haven't, um, you're not super aware of this, but I just want to make you aware um, and, and we can give you any background you need. Can I share my screen, Kristen? Am I allowed to now? Yep, you still have access. Okay. Let's see. Oh my God, I can't see. I have to put my glasses on to find the right screen to share. Um, I think it's this one. Do you guys see something that starts with statement on the Charles Henry Will Wright Foster House? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yep. Perfect. So Don, do you want to kind of speak to this a little bit? Uh, no, I thought uh, from the last meeting we had, we talked about the need for the commission to um, to have a statement or make a statement about yep. this. Yep. So essentially, we're, um, we're we're making that statement. You know, it's it's our role as a commission to um, to evaluate um, and make recommendations for preservation. And I think this is a perfect opportunity, even though the house is not on the current inventory. It still has. Um, uh, qualifies as significant um, historical property, both by the family connection and also even the, the architects who worked on the house. Um, they're the same architects that did Wellesley's Town Hall, which uh, is an impressive building. Yeah, there's a lot of history with this family. I mean, and the and the descendants of the family, um, and. I can, you know, I, I can, I think I've sent you guys all the information on it. Um, Jeff, I'm happy to email you what was the um, offering, like, you know, when, when, with really expensive properties, these realtors do these offerings and you can see photos and read all of the background on it. But um, as Gloria pointed out, even if we listed it now, it just gives us six months. It doesn't really do anything. So we need something a little stronger so this is our plea to we're not quite sure yet but um we want to get this to i'm thinking kate marcus and marianne I, I don't know Kristen. what 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 do you think what would be the protocol for us to get this to somebody's attention what's the right thing to do 
Uh, you can send it to the select board email and then they all receive it and Kate receives it as well. Okay, so what is, is that? Can you give me that email address, please? So it's select board at yeah. needhamma.gov. Okay. So we just want, um, thank you, Kristen. Uh -huh. I just want to make sure everyone on the, um, our commission is okay with this, um, that that Don's prepared and that you feel that we should um, definitely send this off to select board and see if anybody has any questions. Yeah, um, Rose uh, sent some, a couple of comments um, before okay. she left for Florida. Whoops. Um, one is in the first paragraph, uh, she suggested in that last line that it read development of multi multiple single family housing rather than multifamily housing. Okay. Her, her feeling was that when you say multifamily housing, you might think of a duplex or something sure. else. Okay. So, so it would be development of multiple. Is that true? Family housing. Well, actually, I mean, I thought it was it was more like townhouses and. Yeah, that's what's that's what's going to be built there. But would they would townhouses not be single family houses? That's... No, they're more condos. They're more yeah. condominiums. So, well, uh, so whatever it gets is the, into the, the nuance of sorry to to interject. No, ahead, um, no, no, please. But I think my understanding, and again, my background is more in commercial and institutional work. So. But when we use multifamily housing, that usually does mean more apartments and condos and stacked residential. Townhouse mm -hmm. isn't, I think the differentiation is single family detached versus single family. So like a standalone house would be a single family detached, whereas townhomes are more, they're still single family because you don't have people in I'm sorry, I'm losing no. my words, but yeah. that's that's how I usually differentiate the multifamily versus single family. Would, would a better uh, adjective be residential? Residential housing. housing. Do you think? What do you guys think of that? That's well, encompasses because we don't know with this particular property. You know, we know there's going to be development of other. You know probably townhomes and duplexes or whatever, but with this particular house, which we're trying to save, we're trying to save it for residential occupancy, right? You know, the, I think the only hope, you know, the only hope for saving this house, all right, is that the developer, that's who we have to appeal to, all right? Because if, 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 the, if the town imposes something on, on this, it, 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 it interferes with the deal. Right, they can't. They I, actually, they can't. You know, right? So it's already been approved the PNS. So um, and but Jeff, and if, Jeff, the PNS is between the foster family and Northland. It's not. It's not. It doesn't involve the town at this point. But what's the next step would be that Northland really? would come to the town, requesting all these approvals to do what they want to do. Right. Well, they've already and they've already got town meetings approval for the the, the purchase and, and and uh but it's conditional it's, yeah it's conditional upon permitting and conservation it, there's a lot going on because it's in near wetlands it's near conservation yeah. land it's you know it, it's not straightforward so like Laura, right it's not but, gonna but, happen but there's no anything. historical constraint there, there's no there's no historical constraint on on anything that they're doing at the, at, at this point because Correct. because Just we're not it. because we're not empowered and we Correct. will never be empowered and the 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 the, uh, the select with Needham or town may will not look to go back we're back on this deal for fearing of you know messing with the deal if, and then you know again the, the the risk is if we lose the townhouse kind of friendly 40B uh, thing, then we run the risk of uh, development of 30, you know, one and a half acre single family McMansions uh, in there and losing all of that 
open space. So that's the risk that if, if we get to push too hard, and I think we gotta, you gotta ask the developer, is there any way that he can incorporate that structure? Because we also heard how it was impossible, you know, the, the renovation of that and the heating of that for a single family is $6 million, right? So it's not, it's not viable unless they come there and they do a, they, they make that building part of the, the townhouse kind of 40B right. kind of thing that fits in with the same thing that they're looking for, you know, approval from the planning board uh, from. Right. So that's. I'm not sure we, we need to get into that. I mean, all we want at this point is to make a statement to say that this house has historical value and we want the select board to take that into consideration as they move forward. Isn't that right? Yeah, and I think, you know, we have no leverage whatsoever. So, um, no, you know, if right. anybody is going to, if we approach the developer, they would they would completely ignore it. If um, we did get the town, you know, behind this, they obviously couldn't force it either, but would have more leverage if you know, it became part of the conversation. Yeah, but didn't we feel that we needed to be on the record to say and, that? And I think, yeah, and I think that that's that's correct, Don. Yeah, yep. The biggest part of that. Yeah. yeah, maybe we can. Maybe we not get into this. Well, just looking at that uh, well, suggested think... change, maybe it just be the development of housing on the property. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just take out that multifamily. Yeah. Yeah. I think Rose would be okay with that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's just a very first step to kind of put them on notice that we're concerned about that house and we want to just voice our concern because as Dawn said, that's that's part of our charge, right? Whether yeah. we get anywhere or not, you know, I'm not sure. It, it's but, not part of it's not part of our charge in the 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 bylaws for you know because it's not on the you know inventory but it you know in that piece that we um approved for the goals where it said that we would take into consideration uh you know historic properties on the register and da, 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 and any other remember it said any other historic properties right. that we think so right. that that opens the door for us to the, have this level of input correct yeah i agree so we thought this was a good place to start um and i would like it you know if, i don't know what happens kristen after we send this does somebody respond to us or what would be the next step once we send this to that select board address yeah someone normally usually um the chair would respond um but you'll get notified that they all have it and then it's a matter of how they want to respond to it. Okay. So, yeah. So hopefully, the, I, I mean, it would be great if this prompts another meeting or even something, you know, more public. Um, but I think this is all we can do at the moment unless yeah. Gloria or anybody has another idea about how to handle no. it. And I think this is good. If you could go to the last paragraph. Sure. Because yep. that basically is asking um, or, or saying what we're asking. Yeah, so the town of Needham Historical Commission was created to ensure the preservation, protection and development of historical assets that are the visible evidence of Needham's history. The foster house on the Castle Farm Estate is one such asset and the commissioners welcome the opportunity to discuss alternatives to the possible demolition of this historic property which is perfect. Mm -hmm. um, just as a, an aside, I capitalized the commissioner's welcome, commissioners. Okay. And in the paragraph before, first cabinet level secretary of environmental affairs, that's a title, so I, so I capitalized that as well. Okay. okay, so Gloria, can you send, do you mind making that edit, taking that term mm -hmm. multifamily out of that first mm -hmm. paragraph? Yeah. And send your document with edits to Dawn? Okay. And, me. and then, um, Don, I will, or you can, I will email it to the select board address and copy you. Okay. And see what happens. Is that okay? 
Yeah. Glory. I have one more, sorry, Don, I have one more capitalization. Gloria, you might want to yeah. double check me on this, but usually um, architects, if it's if we're singular, then we do capitalize because it's plural. I'm not sure whether they would be capitalized or not. Uh, the second paragraph, the architects of the Boston yeah. firm? Mm -hmm. No, I think in that context, it's not. I think if they said the Boston firm or George Russell Shaw architects, then it would be. Yeah, that okay, thank you. That's what I was debating. It's just, and I, I think it's just a, a, the a noun at that point. Yeah. Gloria also had the A to Rose's name. I did. I already yeah. got that. <laughs> who is who is this Rose E. Darty that we should worry about? Oh, I think goodness. we need to talk to Rose when she gets back. Apparently she's had some she's had some issues that have been confused confused her with the other rose so. i bet it's like male or something yeah it came through like rosy and she's definitely not rosy <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so that's that and then the last item unless anyone has anything else is this heritage three project of you know the designation of additional properties for the inventory and gloria uh, what do you what do you think about that? Where do we stand? Do we need to do anything to get more money or what? Uh, no, we actually, um, I did finally get a copy of the um, contract from Dave Davison. So oh, good. we need to go through, we, ha we hadn't had a copy for ever, ever. Um, so it was hard to really suss out what, what had been completed and what hadn't. Um, we have B forms for all of the designated houses. We have a draft preservation plan that's probably now considerably out of date. And we started on a brochure essentially to, um, you know, an information brochure about what the demolition delay, um, what the inventory is, excuse me. Uh, what the definition delay is, what it is not, because a lot of people think that, you know, once your house is subject to the demolition delay, we completely take over. You know, we tell you what you can do. We tell you what you can't do. You can't paint. You can't do this. You can't. So, no, no, I want to do some renovations. I don't, it's like, no, it doesn't involve that. Yeah. Um, so some clarity, hopefully about, you know, what the, what the bylaw entails. It doesn't entail. Um, I know um, we do still have some outstanding funds on that contract that we have not paid <clears throat> um, oh. the contractor. Uh, yeah. I think we've paid them 15 of the 25,000 and we're still holding 10,000. Um, part of the reason it, it sort of ground to a halt is um, the person doing the research went into another job and just sort of left it and they didn't assign somebody else to the project so just sort of living in limbo um so should this be a cpc requisition for the rest of the money how do we get the money uh no cpc has got the money they're holding it and that's one oh, of the reasons that's that already they, approved okay yeah it was it was approved years ago and okay. they still haven't paid out they've got this okay um sort of open-ended ten thousand dollars that just floats from annual budget to annual budget which is why dave wants to be done with it Got it. So do you think we need another contractor? Is that where we're at now to keep? Uh, what we really need is um, a good editor to, to go through the form. The forms are fine. There are some mistakes that need to be fixed. And there's some boilerplate that needs to be dropped in. There are, you know, things that'll say, you know, add here description of, you know, development to the Great Plain or, you know, something like that. That's consistent through the through the various forms because we prioritize certain areas um, that just needs to be dropped in. So it's sort of a cleanup job more than anything. Okay. So um, is that an intern from Babson College or is it a someone who's well- Maybe a, you know, a, a volunteer or an intern who's interested in history and historical research could just sort of go through them with some guidance and um, clean them up. The other thing is we have 10, no, I'm sorry, 30, give or take, 
of the original inventory sheets, B forms that have not been transcribed. Um, 31 through Heritage 2, we have digital copies. We don't have the first 30. Um, the first inventory only existed on paper. And we had a kid um, transcribe them for their um, their, um, community their community service project, but apparently went from the end to the beginning. So the 30 most important ones, we don't have digital copies. Um, once we have that, we would have essentially one digital resource rather than you know right. the, the big old notebook, which some of us have, and the no data at all, which the rest of you have. Yes. Um, you know, I know anybody who's, who's joined the commission in the last, you know, four or five years probably has never seen the source of these mysterious B forms, um, you know, that we so, just send out. So um, at the next meeting, we should just show some of those or, you know. Yeah, yeah, let me gather together what we have and, and we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting. And then- And I'll have a chance to look through the contract at that point. So maybe we'll be able to, um, uh, you know, list out what's being done, what hasn't been done, what still needs to be done. And then- And whether, and whether we want to contact, whether it's worth contract contacting the contractor um, about finishing it or whether they've done all they can. Right. I, think it, I think we should hold them accountable to finishing it. Well, yeah, we need to see what time. else. Uh, I don't. Well, so what I don't know is whether they haven't finished it or whether they finished what they were going to do and we never paid them. Okay, so is that that's why going through the contract is important to see what the deliverables okay. were and what they have, yeah, you know, have fulfilled and haven't yet fulfilled. Okay, so okay, so you can you you have the contract now, so you can take a look at that, and then mm -hmm. I we talked about before sort of gathering information on the homes we've lost due to our um, yeah. de whatever demo delay process or just to what we've lost. And I think um, we need to weave that in somehow um, to, I don't know if it's to this project, but I think we need to, and we've got a lot going on right now, but I think that is something that we need to sort of make people aware of and I'm not sure where it falls. I don't know what you all think, but um, I don't think people understand what's been lost. And and I think if it was, we were able to bring that to somehow the, the general public's attention, we might get more support for a project like this. And maybe, I know I bring this up all the time, a change in our demo delay to at least extend it and, you know, um, things like that. So that's maybe that's other business. I'm not sure where it falls, but we did talk about that last time. Yeah, um, I think that presentation is going to become important as we get, as we go through the um, LHD process. Um, that's a great point. We could weave it into there, right? Yeah. 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 Because I think that's that's more likely to move forward at this point than um, any extension of the demolition delay. That's a whole nother. I was already told don't even talk about that with this. Right yeah. Now. It's a whole other can of worms. Exactly. So, um, OK. Yeah. That's a so good we get to, and, and that will become because it will have to some extent the same questions. You know, why do we need to do this? Why is it important? Yep. Um, you know, what are we losing? So we'll, it will it will come back to life later if we do get to talk about the demolition delay, but um, we can and use it. If you ever, you know, I know it's probably a lot to gather that, but if you do, it would be great for all of us to see that, you know, and, and, and then maybe we figure out how to present it so that it's in its totality, um, some sort of, I don't know, presentation or something I yeah it was a pets it's a powerpoint so oh, perfect that's perfect yeah so just sort of upgrade it um yes i'll put those on the list for the next meeting and gloria yeah. i'm sure leah and joe would be happy to help with some of this i'm, I'm speaking for them but <laughs> no but. yeah i mean i could sort of i think the first thing is to just get and i do have um a list and can get the photos. So, you know, the first thing is to get the photos assembled in the properties and then start talking 
um, you know, a little more substantively about the properties themselves. Yeah, I mean, I don't. So that's maybe, where that's where their expert, you know, their expertise would be crucial. Yeah. So, Leah and Joe, if you could just kind of work with Gloria on this, I mean, that would be great. Um, I'm happy to do so. Okay. Likewise. I think it would be so um, telling, like to see that all in one place. You know, we see one go and one go at a time. Um, the other the other thing I always think about walking around my neighborhood, which is Jarvis Circle and Nardone Road. So within a quarter of a mile, we've had, I think, nine teardowns ongoing for the past, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to say, 18 months, right? Yeah. And I would love to, like, sort of just exhibit that somehow at the end. You know, we all drive through Needham and we see them, right? You see construction everywhere. Yeah. And, and and people don't, you know, you we always get this, you know, at the last minute, you know, why can't you do something to save the house? Yeah. You know, by then it's too late. It's, too late, it's right? not a it's not a you know an individual throw yourself in front of the bulldozers issue. It's a, <laughs> you know, it's it's a policy and planning issue that has to exactly. start long before a particular house gets on the list. So exactly. And we, yeah. I just feel like we need to make some noise about it a little bit. Um, but I think having just showing what we've lost is, is will have a huge impact. And how, how maybe we can email that to the select board <laughs> email now too. <laughs> I don't know, but um, I think we just need to make a little bit more noise than we have in the past because um, I don't think people are aware really of what's happening here and how the even if they're not historical, quote unquote, on a register. <laughs> They're the character, some of these homes, yeah. a lot of homes of this town, right? Um, and I know Joe and Leah feel the same way. You know, there's a little cute, I don't know what you would call it, with a porch and, you know, it's two stories and you know how they orient them sometimes diagonally to the street. And that that can just be gone. And I you don't see that. Like you drive down May Street or um, what's that, or Webster. Those can all go yeah. because they're not listed on a register. And that changes the character of this town. Uh, Laura, I was kind of thinking along the same lines as you to have some sort of map. I don't know how big of a lift it would do to actually like plot the houses that have been lost on the la on the map. But if you see oh. that like sticks out of a, you know, out of a block were torn down that totally makes that block feel different if it goes from houses that were all right. from 1900 to 2020 right um, and if that's happening kind of all over the town that's very shortly going to make it feel very different so just one way to kind yeah. of plot that's things out and have a different graphic great idea so if gloria gave you you know the powerpoint presentation with the homes that we've lost could you plot those on a map? In theory, I don't know how long it would take me, but I could always test a couple and see how long it takes. Yeah, I mean, if it's a lot of work, of course, you know, we don't, but we're all volunteers here. We have other things to do. But, <laughs> but I mean, you know, I just think we need to raise the awareness, I guess, is how I feel about it. I don't know if you guys all agree, but um, we don't want this town turning into like okay i'm not gonna i'm trying not trying to be like judgy but you know a macro west community with a bunch of subdivisions and brand new homes with like you know uh aluminum siding and uh yeah uh, you know what i mean we don't want that yeah. um okay not when we've got the inventory that we have right i think that's the biggest thing is that we we have all of these beautiful old homes so we want to keep the ones that make sense to keep and some of them don't make sense to keep I will say that too yeah that, that's happened we've seen that right yeah yeah and I think that's actually an interesting problem in Medfield they've got a two two-year demolition delay but everything over 50 years is on the list or 100 years or something yeah which means they yeah. they cycle through a lot of kind of useless meetings when um you know post-war capes or or splits are on the 
on the list and they have to go through and say, you know, no, we're not going to preserve it. No, we're not going to preserve it. No, we're yeah. not going to preserve it. I, Which, you know, is, is kind of a waste of everybody's time. And honestly, I think uh, dilutes the significance of being on the inventory. I agree. But if you look at, and I know this is not our, our purview. But the but two year would be nice. <laughs> If you look at it from uh, an affordable housing perspective, yeah, those homes allow people to live in these towns. And when they're gone, they can't live there. So I know that's not what we do, but- Well, the question is whether they then hold on to them or if they just approve the demolition. Um, right. And, and there was a lot of conversation I had with this woman. And the thing that I remember the most was having the longer demo delay gave the historic commission time to really work, really work with the developer. Yeah. Closely, right. You know, can you just save this wing of the house? Could you just maybe, so they do partial demo delay approvals, right? So they'll say, yeah. we'll approve, you know, everything but this, you know, wing of the house with, you know, whatever. And then, that at least that piece is preserved and they sort of have to, the developer has to incorporate it into the rest of the home. So I thought that was really interesting. We don't have a lot of time, six months, by the time they get their materials, it's not even a delay. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and we have to work, we have to talk to the developers. We should be reaching out and saying, okay, you know, we, we know we have six months we only have six months. We know what you're planning. Would you please consider this, this, or that? You know, could we get you to keep this piece and not that piece? You know, I don't know, but I, it was super interesting to hear what she had to say um, and how they go about it. But I know that's a big deal here, the whole demo delay thing. It's a, it's a problem for another time. We can't do everything at once. We got to focus on our objectives, which I think right now are the local historic district and trying to preserve the foster house. Would, would we all agree that those are the two major things we're working mm -hmm. on now? Yeah. Okay. Is there any other business that anyone wants to bring up, Leah or Joe? Do you have any comment, comments or any questions or anything? No, no, it's pretty, very interesting. It's too bad about the foster house, but you know, it is what it is. Well, maybe it isn't, Joe. Maybe we can, <laughs> you know, we're going to send our email. Who knows? Yeah. We, we got the LHD to at least the starting line, right? That was huge. Right. So who knows what yeah. else we can do? Leah, anything that you wanted to add? Nope. I think the, the letter nicely summarizes the statement we were trying to make based on last month's meeting. So... Okay, it's good with me. All right, so you guys are going to work with Gloria on the what we've lost. Um, Gloria, you're going to just update the um, the little the, the minor changes on the on on Don's statement. Yeah, and then yeah. we'll send, send it to you. Okay, awesome. And then we, Don and I, are going to. It looks like next Tuesday um, at six o'clock. So we'll be able to update you on that at the next meeting. So does that sound like we're, we've covered everything? Does anybody else have anything at all? New business, questions? No, okay. So uh, motion to adjourn. Can I make that motion? No, no. I'll make that motion. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. make a motion. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Anybody else want a second? I'll, I'll second. second. I'll second. I'll <laughs> fifth. Do we need a roll call for this or are we good? We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Anybody okay. object? No, good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks to all of you. I appreciate it, Don. Thanks for helping thanks. I was away. Okay. All right, take care. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Thanks. All right. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Everyone. Good night.